we'll wait for Mr. Rankin. Okay, we're on. Oh, yeah. Good evening, everybody, and the Fauquier County School Board meeting is called to order. And if you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Starner, if you would please take the roll and record. And at this time, if there is a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the school board adopt the agenda as written. Second. Motion and a second that the agenda be adopted as written. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. And before I get into announcements, I believe Ms. Hoover has something for the school board. And that's all I know. <laughs> Good evening. I'm just here to report that we had an, a very successful Star Talk program this year. Oh, right. And um, to thank you all for your support, we have official FCPS 2012 Star Talk t shirts oh, yeah. with yeah. Turkish and Arabic on the back. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. How many students yeah. did you have? We had 112. We oh, have oh my goodness. quadrupled on this. Yeah. Yeah. Another successful program. Thank you. I've been wearing last year's t shirt regularly, so I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can use this one. Um, while, you're, while you're there, um, I attended this on, I forget what day it was, but um, it really, Fauquier has a remarkable program here that people are trying to duplicate throughout the country. And I don't know if everybody really realizes that, how uh, overwhelming support this program has. Um, the other thing, when I was touring all the classrooms, I, this time, because I did last year also, right. this year I was really surprised how little English I heard in all the classrooms. So it was, it was really neat, even from the, the younger students. It, it, and the teachers are just incredible. So uh, it, uh, thank you for the program. Thank you. Yes. It's really marvelous. And thanks for the teaching. Thank you. Okay. A lot of hard work. Yep. Okay. I will move to announcements. The first day of school, believe it or not, is Monday, <laughs> August 20th. Parks and Rec co-op meeting, really, will be, will be held Tuesday, August 21st at 6 p.m. in the Alice Jane Childs Building Basement Conference Room. There will be an FHS renovation Advisory Committee meeting Wednesday, August 22nd at 6 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. Chairman's Night is Monday, August 27th at 5 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. There will be a school board work session Monday, August 27th at 6 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. Um, back to Chairman's Night, are we maybe not going to be there at 5 o'clock that evening? Um, we won't be. Right. Right. Okay. <coughs> so, yeah. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. That's, no that chairman's yeah. Yeah. night, August 27th. Okay. There will be a health advisory committee meeting Wednesday, September 5th at 8 a.m. in the central complex meeting room. The special ed advisory committee will meet Wednesday, September 5th at 5.30 in the central complex meeting room A. The School Support Council will meet Thursday, September 6th at 7 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. And the next school board meeting is Monday, September 10th at 7 p.m. in the Warren Green Building. And Ms. Starner has asked me to announce that beginning with that meeting, the September 10th meeting, the only thing that will be a hard copy out in the hallway there for everybody will be the agenda since everything else is going to be up here on the screen now um, the only thing that will be provided out there will be just a hard copy of the agenda and if the, if somebody needs something they should contact you okay 
Um, we don't have a response? No. Yeah, okay, then we will move to citizens time. The school board appreciates public input. However, due to time constraints, citizens time is not a time for dialogue. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Matters relating to personal or personnel issues should not be discussed. The school board welcomes the public's <coughs> comments and believes community involvement, involvement is an important component of a successful school division. And um, when you come to the podium, if you would please state your name and your magisterial district. And Mr. Green, I believe you are the sole speaker this evening. Well, but you still you get mean. three minutes. <laughs> Shucks. That's okay. We'll keep it very short. John Green, Lee District. I'm concerned about the Fakia High School renovation. The renovation agreement, as you remember, is between the supervisors and the board, school board. It limits the uh, plan to $32.8 million. The new classroom building is not to exceed $26.6 million. Everything else not to exceed $6.2 million. The classroom building appears to be on budget. However, the Performing Arts Center, which is part of the expanded scope, is now estimated to cost some $5.4 million. That's uh, quite an increase from what it was originally uh, estimated to cost. But my biggest concern is this only leaves less than $800,000 uh, to complete the rest of the renovations in phase two. Uh, the Board of Supervisors School Board Liaison Committee is charged with deciding what renovations will be done beyond the new classroom building. Uh, after the Performing Arts Center, as I said, there's only less than $800,000 to complete the rest of the renovation. Where's the money going to come from? The original needs and wants list that was uh, submitted to the uh, Board of Supervisors dated April 14th, 2011 estimated that outside the new classroom building they would need $25.6 million. When you subtract the Performing Arts Center, it leaves you with about $20 million. Now we're talking about only 6.2 and you've already used up 5.4. I'm also seeing in the latest uh, school CIP that uh, some of the items that were originally in the plan for the renovation are now showing up in the CIP. Uh, the liaison committee is now considering projects such as the science labs uh, that would put phase two project over the spending limit of 6.2 million dollars. And I some just simple questions. What happened to the original plan to renovate Buckyer High School? What is the plan now? It seems to be going outside the limits set originally. And what will be the final cost of renovating Buckyer High School? It appears that it's going to be far greater than the 32.8. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we will move to board member reports and let's see we'll start with Brian uh, we're gonna hear a little bit about our financial report and our financial <coughs> committee uh, the school health advisory board has not been meeting over the summer but we do have a new chair person mm -hmm. to, to chair that and we're looking forward to ramping that back up in September um, and uh, obviously we I'm looking forward to the uh, to Wednesday convocation and uh, being out there, I really hope many of the teachers will stop by to see us. Uh, employees will stop by to see us at the uh, benefits yep. uh, portion. And I'm looking forward to meeting folks who do stop by. Mr. Blaine. All right, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, I would like to give a readout from mm -hmm. the building committee. Um, let's start with Fort Carroll High School. The construction remains on schedule and budget. Uh, an incredible amount of work has been done, uh, including much of the detail work both inside and outside to include uh, the electrical work and also the mechanical work. Uh, the geothermal is getting ready for test and turn up. Well, they've, they're they hooked up to finance department. I uh, mean, off, they're hooked up to finance office. So, so they called yep. it out and everything is okay? Yep. All right. Wow. That's, yep. well, that's great. Uh, the auditorium refurbishing is nearly completed. New flooring, paint, seating, stage curtains, and uh, a new sound system. Uh, the kitchen work, including a new dishwasher, should be completed this week as well. Uh, we have completed 41 CMP projects this summer, 
from the comprehensive uh, maintenance plan that involved 10 schools. The projects included, but were not limited to, fire lane painting, interior and exterior painting, new carpet in some areas, uh, new VCT flooring in some areas, uh, stage curtain cleaning, and in some cases replacements, uh, playground projects, and some other interior and exterior projects such as curb damage repairs. Uh, we demo two old trailers and hauled them out of there, some fencing work and things of that nature. Uh, CM Bradley, the playground is nearing completion. The water tank replacement for Coleman and Marshall <laughs> Middle School. Uh, we're almost there, folks. There will be a special exception pre-application meeting uh, on August the 28th, and we hope to send out an invitation to bid by the end of the month. Uh, the same thing goes for Southeastern um, Alternative School. Energy and water management, we consumed 9% less energy year over year uh, for two th wrapping up 2012, but our cost increased by 1%. Uh, and that was largely due to uh, the increase in prices for fuel oil, or oil, uh, propane, and electricity. Uh, but we, we're doing okay there. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, start talk, we already talked about that. Uh, the tour of Parker High School was absolutely wonderful. It was... Um, impressive, isn't it? We're, it is very impressive, and when that gets done, it's really going to be a, a uh, shining star it for is. Fauquier County. Um, I just wanted to add a couple little things to our finance committee meeting that Mr. Gord talked about. We are watching the health insurance, yeah. just keeping an eye on that. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that could uh, develop into something uh, else, but right now we're just keeping an eye on it. The other thing is the policies, the business operation policies that you have tonight. Mm -hmm. um, we, did, we left it as is in a couple places so that the entire board could look at it, so make sure you review those really carefully. Um, to see what your recommendations will be on that because we we left them as is okay. um, And then the other things were just uh, That so that's really it. That's all we're that just want to make sure you know the policies read those in detail. Okay. Okay, okay. Just that Wednesday is a busy day for the board and the school <laughs> division. We have uh, our health and benefits fair starting at 730 in the morning at Liberty High School uh, followed immediately um, at 9.30 by convocation. And then at 10.45, uh, the convocation will end, and selected um, staff members have been invited to our second annual 30-year luncheon, honoring those people in the division with 30-plus years in education. That'll be at Grace Miller. And then everyone gets a few hours rest, then 5.30 is the new teacher uh, dinner and reception at the Springs Club. The Committee for Excellence in Education sponsors that annually, and that will be on the same. Usually, it's on Monday night, but we have a, um, we have this meeting this evening, and so it's pushed. So Wednesday will be chock full of excitement for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. um, we did not have personnel committee meeting, right. but um, a couple of things I need to remind everybody: we announced it, or we decided, I should say, at our work session, but I will. Um, announce it again, the 2013-2014 calendar that we were looking at, we have decided to push that back a while, any um, discussion of that until we unfortunately have to um, hire a new superintendent. So we thought it would only be fitting that we give him an opportunity to give, give us his thoughts on um, changing that calendar. So we're just going to put that on hold for a while. <clears throat> and the other thing, uh, again, to do with the superintendent search, um, board members will be out in force at schools for the next month. We're going to, I think we have most of the back to school nights covered. There will be a board member at each of the schools for those back to school nights simply to take input from parents as far as what they would like to see as we begin the superintendent search. I know some of the schools don't necessarily have um, a, a time when all the parents are together to announce that, but um, hopefully word will get out and we'll just be there. And I, I, there's a couple of schools now that we have 
um, conflicts with Wednesday night is one, Taylor, mm -hmm. and then um, the, um, work session. the work session. So we may have to figure out something else for them. But other than that, um, tell parents to find us in the building if they want to give us some of their thoughts. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Ms. Kotoff, finance manager financial management. Good evening. What you have before you is your first look at how the year ended. This is as of August 8th. Now we continue to um, pay accounts payable through this week and um, continue to receive revenue, which is a good thing because if you look at it, mm -hmm. um, the year-to-date revenue um, is less expenditures by 483000 One of the big ticket items that still comes in is the June sales tax that was collected. We don't get to August. So even before I left the office today, I was seeing if it was there yet to see how close it is to my <laughs> estimate. Um, but it's not in yet. So that, and that, um, we're anticipating about a million dollars. So that will certainly shift it. At the end of the year, but when everything settles out, we're looking at slightly less than 1% of our budget left. Um, yeah, it is, it's close. Um, also the school asset fund, um, the board of supervisors, when they adopted the budget that has an automatic carryover for those projects, the, um, school textbook fund, um, that we will take action, um, to you to take to the board of supervisors requesting that to be carried over as we do every year mm -hmm. and the food nutrition, um, fund. Um, at this point, again, there's still some things, um, settling down, uh, we'll end in a positive and add to its fund balance. Good. That's good. All right. Any good. questions? We, we, Cheryl and I both read an article in the Fredericksburg paper not too long ago about the <laughs> huge debt that the, um, that the school nutrition fund was carrying from parents. Uh, and we've really worked on that. Correct? We have. We, we still do have some, but it is something we do work on. Yes. Right. I can I can get that information at the next meeting just as a just point sure. of reference. Yeah, yeah. Janice did send it to me. I think it's yeah, like, I did. It's very low. Um, in fact, I have the um, the article to talk about in senior staff tomorrow. Oh. But what it used to be a number of years ago. It's about thirty three thousand dollars. <coughs> right now, it's about six thousand nine hundred. Oh, wonderful! They've done a really good job. Oh, really? Managers have worked with the principals good. and worked with the parents in collecting the money. And the total is about $6,900. And so everybody understands what that is, is when a child comes to school and doesn't have money, of course we feed them, but the parents do owe that. Or if they um, pay at the end of the year, don't they, some of them have a balance? Um, sometimes it, um, to um, graduate, we let right. them know that they've got a balance remaining. Um, some do leave the school division without paying, so mm -hmm. part of that um, may be some that have left the school division. Yeah, but the article was close to a hundred thousand dollars for the other. We uh, not to mention other school divisions. So yeah. <laughs> yes, yep. So okay, thank great. you, <coughs> Ms. Downs, Human Resource Department. Good evening. We're in that last minute push to try to fill some <laughs> positions. Uh, for certified vacancies, we still currently have 13. We have some offers pending. Um, we've had some significant challenges in recruiting speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, as well as um, I think that's it for the certified challenges. Okay. Classified, though, we have a number of positions. We are at 35, and um, we have seen, had significant challenges recruiting bus drivers. I've had three, uh, my team has had three bus driver fairs where it advances the hiring process, meaning people can come in off the street, apply, go through the orientation, and um, be ready to start subbing. Uh, we have not had huge turnouts at each. I would say overall we've probably had about 35, that's for all three. So we are, um, I've talked to the town manager and have partnered with him to get those electronic signs that come into Warrington, which will say bus drivers need it with our phone number, mm -hmm. and they will go live hopefully this week, um, trying to do some different things to attract some strong applicants. Also having trouble recruiting school health nurses, as sure. well mm -hmm. as... Um, sure we are. Yeah, <laughs> as custodians, believe it or not. Custodians <coughs> um, right now, we're having trouble recruiting that pool. So some, some significant challenges. Definitely have... Um, 
three recruiters out there trying to make cold calls on people who maybe applied before, trying to get with um, retirees because sometimes they would like to come back for a second job. So um, that's currently what we're doing in HR. Uh, Dr. Lewis spoke about Wednesday, our busy day there, our health and wellness fair, as well as uh, the 30 plus dinner. And then um, I think that's about how, it. Any how many questions? do we have 30 plus? It's about 102, yes. Wow. Yeah. What? So very, 102, 102, yes. I meant to grab how many RSVPs uh, came, but um, I, I did not grab that number this yeah. evening. Ah. Now, now that's fewer than last year, but we had a lot of retirees. That it is fewer than 30. last year, yes. Right. <laughs> so we had a, a but I'm sure we also had someone bridge over. That's true. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But that's still, uh, given the size of the division, to have over 100 people with 30 plus years is significant. Right. So Wednesday night's number is still fluid right now, right? Wednesday's nights, no, we're having, uh, most people are saying yes to Wednesday night. So okay. um, I've been able to give Meg. But i pick up any more. Oh, yes, oh, yes, definitely. Between now but now. what do we have now at this point, do you know? New oh, sorry. We, no, we, I should know about, that. I don't. About, about <laughs> 40, 44, 45 oh, new teachers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the number's nice. lower than in yeah. years past. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it's a good bit lower. Yeah. Okay, <clears> thank, thank you. I guess, questions, anybody? No. When are you presenting? After the consent. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion regarding consent agenda? Madam Chair, I motion that the school board <coughs> approve the following. Uh, the minutes of the July the 9th school board meeting and the July the 23rd special school board meeting and work session, payment of bills, personnel actions, support services policy, restructuring and revisions and religious exemption 0813121.1. A second that. Motion and a second, <clears throat> excuse me, that the school board approve the following, the minutes of the July 9th school board meeting and the July 23rd special school board meeting and work session, payment of bills, personnel actions, support services, poly, policy restructuring and revisions, and religious exemption 081312.1. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to take a moment uh, in passing the um, consent agenda, which included personnel actions. The board this evening appointed three new assistant principals. And so I'd like to take a moment to introduce them to you now. Seated in the far row next to Ms. Wolf, uh, Dr. Wolf from uh, Pierce is Karen Sparr. And she'll be the new assistant principal at uh, Pierce Elementary School. Just to make sure Welcome. You know Welcome. 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 <laughs> and on the other side in the back is Lori Ellison, and she'll be the new assistant principal at Southeastern. Oh, good. All right. All right. And um, Angie Gum, who's hiding there, <laughs> uh, next to Ms. Banks, will be the new assistant principal at Bradley Elementary School. <laughs> We're delighted that they could be here. Yes, welcome to everybody. Okay, information items, and that's Ms. Kotoff again. What you have before you is the um, restructured revised section three, which is termed business operations. Um, for each sheet, there are um, information about changes, so you can see if it's pretty much the same as before or not. These have been through our attorney. And um, I wanted to just mention a few of them. Mm -hmm. All the policies went to the attorney, but there's one policy that has an adjustment. It's, it's been to the attorney both ways. So it really is a school board d decision. And that falls in section two, planning, and that's about the annual budget. And what the proposal that's included before you is to set a limit to the superintendent's approval for transfers. Right now, the superintendent has, whether we're categorical or not, he has the approval to make transfers um, within the whole fund with, or within category, if it's adopted that way. With this policy, it would limit it to the same amount that you see 100000 when you have to approve a contract. Right. Um, and then from that point to the full 
fund or the four cat full categorical piece, it would be the finance committee. And then anything that goes to the Board of Supervisors would have to have the approval of the full board. So it just sets another layer. Um, there's pros and cons about both. At the finance committee, we did discuss this. And our decision was to kind of take it forward and see where the full board would like right. to be on this decision. Okay. So, but like I said, the attorneys have seen it both ways. They're comfortable with it both ways. It really is your decision. Okay. The only policy that's not included is the procurement policy. It is um, a large undertaking. I am, I've uh, set up an appointment with finance and the procurement um, manager to sit through and to go through that. We're looking at streamlining it. We're looking about some of the thresholds and controls. So that will come back probably in October. The only other thing in these policy that's included is um, the fees and fines, which you have already approved in July. Right. Mm -hmm. It is included, again, just to kind of have the whole piece there. But what you hadn't seen before are the regulations that are approved by administration. So just for your information, those are included as well. So this um, I would take to work session. For yeah. any questions, please let me know. We'll, we'll look at then and then potentially for approval in September. Yeah. Good. Okay. Great. F Finance Committee, the, 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 you, you folks, uh, you discussed it already. Any, we discussed that, it. But anything you have uh, heartburn with? No, no, except for the policy that Ms. Kostoff was talking about, the one about the limits. But category could uh, right, transfer changes. Right, the category changes limits of so transfers. We yeah. thought that should come to the. Yeah, and we, we just talked about the timing of that policy as well <laughs> before a new superintendent comes in mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Um, and we also talked about the absence of restructuring on purchasing. Yes. At this time. I had a concern about that, so. But everything okay. else, okay. everything else was fine except that one. Yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, the, that decision. Right. Okay. We'll talk about it at work session. Yep, work right. session. Yeah, exactly. We'll get more detail. Yep. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, but it, what yeah. I'd like to mention again is that it is really helpful. It worked great last time the way everybody emailed their questions well ahead of oh, yes. time so yeah. that, and, and the way Ms. Starner did an absolute superb job of putting it all together for the meeting, that was great. So if we yeah. could do that again, that'd be great. Okay. So, like, write yourself a note. <laughs> Send those emails <laughs> with questions. Probably the Wednesday before. Is that good? Um, to get them out Wednesday yeah, before? Or, or, is that good? That's fine. The Wednesday before yeah, we'll the work session? One. Okay. Okay, move to action items. And that is um, the superintendent, so, or, excuse me, search consultant. Um, I will just say that. Uh, hopefully everybody has seen all of the information the, that um, Ms. Starner has put together. It's been very informative. Um, I talked with J. Van Gelder yesterday and um, got his input from a previous one. For, for the benefit of you all who don't know, J., yeah. he was a former board member who uh, sat on the school board when we did our last uh, school superintendent uh, search. Yeah. And um, we've had references and mm -hmm. from many different sources, many different counties, board members, clerks. Um, so, leaving that. And, yeah. and I, I would like to like to add, I went through this process right. before, and we looked at the consultants and the pricing and the strategy and and, and, and all of these things. And Ben Howerton, I mean, really really stood out. Um, I like the idea that one, his cost is, is about half of what some of these others charge. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he gives us the ability to do some of the legwork so we don't have to be charged. And Ginger does a great job of policing that and keeping us focused on, on what we need to do and when we need to do it and, and all of that. And it's, it's worked great in the past. Uh, I think we have a good rapport with, uh, with Mr. Howerton. He certainly understands the demographics of the county and, and, and what we look for. Uh, he has uh, delivered to us two great superintendents in the past. Uh, he's got a great track record. Right, right. And uh, that's, that's he's, he's very impressive. Yeah, and, and Jay said the same thing. He was, he couldn't say enough good yeah. things um, about Mrs. the process. Mrs. Murray. Mentioned the same thing Good. extensively. <clears throat> Good. Okay. Um, so, Ryan? Yeah. Um, 
I did independent outside even of you know what we mm -hmm. did as well and um, outside the county um, one of the candidates was VSBA mm -hmm. and a lot of what we feedback we had from the reports was confirmed by other folks mm -hmm. um, and um, I also looked at the to, to get some clarification on state code in terms of what contracts can be done with a superintendent, what type of contracts can be, because I think there is state code specifically about that. And I was wondering if Ms. Starner, if uh, state, if you could try to find the state code and, and it's, that's current to, because um, I don't know, based on LIS and other things, what I, what I have and from DOE, but if we can get that in terms of from the state, what our, what our limitations are and yep. what our requirements are. Um, be, even before we engage with Absolutely. whatever consultant we select. Okay. All right. Um, do you, does somebody want to make a motion tonight, or do you need to talk? I, I talked with um, Maureen this afternoon. She is very comfortable with Mr. Howerton. After looking at all the information, she also said that you know she would be um, in agreement there. <clears throat> Well, I, I certainly would, would um, feel comfortable in making that motion. Okay. If I may. Uh, Madam Chair, I motion that the school board employ uh, Ben Howerton <clears throat> to assist and consult with the superintendent search. Second. Motion and a second that the school board employ Ben Howerton, and that is with Synergy Professional Resource Group, to assist and consult with the superintendent search. Any other discussion? I'd, I'd like to echo what Brian was saying as far as getting the state codes, and I think you know, we, we've got access to that, and we probably should have some type of, well, in order to, to discuss uh, salaries and, and such, I think we have to have a closed session for that, do we not? And I think that's something that once we get the state codes and we can look at uh, salary structures and, and, and all of that before, like you said, before we even engage any any discussion with uh, uh, with the shortlist folks? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I also yeah. want to kind of echo a uh, point here because I, I took a look at do you need this? You know, I went to the base question, do you need a consultant? A consultant? Oh. Um, and I had some people ask me that and I came to the conclusion this is a this is a decision like is it Spotsylvania mm -hmm. County? You can't get this wrong right. because this not only sets your school division back but to get this wrong is very expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so um, uh, I just want to also reiterate that for people who are questioning, including myself, do we need to do this? I just, the trajectory this sets us on is, is you can't do without it at this level, so. Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion, there is a motion before us that the school board employ, as I said, Ben Howerton with Synergy Professional Resource Group to assist and consult with the superintendent search. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and the motion carries, and I will get in touch with him okay. ASAP. Okay. Anything else to come before the board in open session? <coughs> if not, then. I move that the school board convenes a closed meeting for the purpose of discussing and considering discipline matters pursu pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A, parentheses 2. I'll second that. Motion and a second that the school board convene a closed meeting for the purpose of discussing and considering discipline matters pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A, parentheses 2. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries, and we are in closed session.